Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, it's about time you got here. Where were you? Well, I went to the YWCA girls place play softball. And one girl was running to third base. She slipped and fell and landed in my lap. And boy, was I mad. Why? The umpire made me put her back in the game. <laughs> Man. Was, was she a pretty girl? Oh, pretty. Hmm. Yeah, but she was gorgeous. I made a date with her after the game, and brother, did she send me. She did. Yeah, but when I got back, she wasn't there. <laughs> Costello, why do you keep annoying every girl that you meet? Who do you think you are, Casanova? Who do I think I who? Who do you think you are? Casanova? Casanova? Huh. I may not be Casanova, but people say that I'm as good-looking as Van Johnson. Who says that? How do I know? Do you think I go around eavesdropping? <laughs> well, if she's such a pretty girl, why didn't you propose to her and marry her? I can't marry her. I don't know anything about her. What difference does that make? In Africa, a man doesn't even know his wife until after he marries her. What do you mean in Africa? <laughs> you dope. You don't even know what marriage is. Yes, I do. Marriage is a friendship that got out of control. Ah, <laughs> uh, Costello, you shouldn't have any trouble getting... <laughs> Hello? You shouldn't have any trouble getting married. Do you know that out here in Hollywood... There are two girls for every man. Two girls for every man? Are you sure? Certainly. Then some dirty sneak has got four. <laughs> Costello, it's no use. You'll never get a girl until you settle down and become a man of regular habits. I am a man of regular habits. Then how come you were out until four o'clock this morning with that redhead that lives next door? That's one of my regular habits. I... <laughs> Costello, I can't understand how girls go out with you in the first place. Habit, it's my terrific magnetism. You've got magnetism? Yes, last week I picked up two blondes, a redhead, a brunette, and a rusty nail. Right. <laughs> why don't you be like me, Costello? I've got away with women. You haven't got away with many lately. I... <laughs> Is that so? I happen to be the reason that women leave home. Yes, the day you were born, your mother took one look at you, and she hasn't been back since. <laughs> Yes, the boys are on the beam tonight. And they'll be back on it in just about one minute. But first, let's hear this. Costello, will you stop that walking up and down? What's the matter with you? What are you worried about? Last night, my Uncle Mike was robbed while he was asleep. Oh, now, wait a minute. How could your Uncle Mike be robbed? He's got all his money sewed up in his long underwear. Oh, yes. Well, it was a hot night, and he left the back door of the bank open. I... <laughs> Don't tell him, lady. Nah, all right. <laughs> That's no reason 
why you should worry. No? No. Well, when I get on the next page, I'll find out why not. <laughs> well, you find out. Oh, no, huh? Well, I got plenty of reasons. Saturday, Saturday night, they arrested my uncle, Jim Kelly. He broke into a grocery store and he stole $390. Well, why did he do it? The poor guy was hungry. Well, if he was hungry, why didn't he steal all... Why didn't he steal all the money, Lou? Why didn't he steal some groceries or something? He's a proud man, Abbott. He likes to pay for everything he gets. <laughs> and besides, he needs the money to buy a new car. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> He'd be better off without a car. Costello, it's, it's very dangerous driving in California. You're telling me? In Los Angeles, you have to drive for five people. The one in front of you, the one in back of you, and the ones on each side of you. Oh, wait a minute. That's only four cars. Where's the fifth? She'll pull out in front of you any minute. <laughs> well, Abbott, I gotta leave now. I got a new job with my brother Pat in the trucking business. <laughs> has, he, has he got his own truck? Yeah, you should see it, Abbott. It's one inch wide and a block long. A truck an inch wide and a block long? Mm -hmm. What is he delivering it? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> Next week, he's going to buy a round truck. A round truck? What for? Meatballs. Be awesome. <laughs> Talk sense. Mm -hmm. Is your brother Pat making any money in the trucking business, Lou? Oh, yes. He did so good last week that he bought his wife one of those new electric blankets. It saves her a lot of time around the house. Now, wait a minute. How can an electric blanket help her with the work around the house? Well, she takes the eggs and the bacon to bed with her. And when she gets up in the morning, breakfast is ready. <laughs> that electric blanket is making her very popular, too. Uh, what do you mean? Last night, she turned it on too high, and now... Yes? She's the toast of the town. I... <laughs> oh, Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello, I've got to talk to you. I've got a great idea. Wait a minute, mister. What's the idea of breaking in here like this? Well, I've got an idea that will make you two the most popular comedy team in radio. What is it? I'll stamp your name underneath every cow in the country. Wait a minute, wait a minute. How will that make us popular? Well, at least you'll have all the farmers pulling for you. I... <laughs> Well, well, it's Susan Miller. Susan, I'm certainly glad you showed up tonight because I'm going to sing a duel with you. Costello, you mean a duet. A duel is where somebody gets hurt. You never sang with me, did you? <laughs> now, when did you become a singer, Costello? Well, I don't like to brag, but would you believe that I taught Bing Crosby how to sing? No, I wouldn't. You're right. Once in a while, I catch a sucker. <laughs> Castello, you don't know the first thing about music. Well, I'll have you know what I studied music. Nah. I went to a singing school. I used to study until I was blue in the face. And then the teacher presented me with a medal. For being the best singer in the class? No, for having the bluest face. <laughs> well, I've got to go now, boys. I'm going swimming down at the beach. I bought one of those new French bathing suits. Comes equipped with a shoehorn and a hacksaw. Why do they give you a shoehorn and a hacksaw with a bathing suit? Well, the shoehorn gets me into the bathing suit. And after I wear it, I'll need the hacksaw to get me out of jail. <laughs> so long, Fat You know, there goes a nice kid, Abbott. The only thing is, she's money mad. Money mad? Yeah, she's mad because I ain't got no money. <laughs> ah, so what? Remember, Costello, money isn't everything. You know, you can't take it with you. It's nice to have it here so you can say goodbye to it. <laughs> you know, my family's always had money. In fact, my Uncle Rudolph was one of the first gold miners in California. One day when he was in the mine digging for gold, he was killed by a falling spade. A falling spade killed my Uncle Tom? Was he a gold miner? No, he was killed by the ace of spades that fell out of his sleeve in a poker game. <laughs> well, Costello, you'll never have to worry about money as long as I got it. We're pals. Share and share alike. Well, I feel the same way about you, Abbott. That's swell. You, you mean you'd share everything you have with me? If you had two cars, you'd give me one? Sure. I, if you had two houses, you'd give one of them to me? I certainly would. And if you had uh, two department stores, you'd, you'd give me one? Yes, sir. We're pals. Share and share alike. Swell. I, if you had two dollars, would you give me one? No. Why? Because I've got two dollars. I... <laughs> Oh, well, that's the way you feel, eh? I thought I was your pal. Are you trying to tell me that money means more to you than I do? I didn't say that, Abbott. Well, does it? Yes. 
<laughs> that settles it, Costello. I'm going on my vacation to New Jersey, and I'm not taking you with me. <laughs> Who wants to go to New Jersey now? When we were there last summer, the mosquitoes were so big they were carrying baseball bats. I woke up in the middle of the night, and two of them were sitting on my stomach holding a conversation. Oh, now don't be silly. The mosquitoes can't talk. Don't tell me. These two were certainly chewing the fat. I... <laughs> you idiot. The only mosquitoes that bite are, are female mosquitoes. Well, the one that nipped me when I was bending over to tie my shoe was no lady. I... <laughs> The night your Uncle Roy got drunk, the mosquitoes were biting him all night and it kept me awake. Well, if they were biting him, why did it keep you awake? Well, they'd bite him and then come over and sit on my bed and hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> well, Castell, on second thought, I don't think I'll go to New Jersey either. I, I need a complete rest where nobody would bother me, where the name Bud Abbott means nothing. Oh, you're staying in town, eh? I... <laughs> Never mind that. Uh, where are you going? Well, I think I'll go to Honolulu. Last time I was there, I met a beautiful native girl. She was gorgeous, and what a figure. All day, she'd walk around carrying a big basket on her head. Then at night, she'd sneak off, and she'd meet me. Ah, brother, she taught me plenty. She did? Yes. You should see me carry a basket on my head. <laughs> Never mind that. Have you been getting plenty of rest? No. And I've been having a lot of trouble going to sleep. Last night, I didn't fall asleep till 11 o'clock. What time did you go to bed? Five minutes to 11. I... <laughs> now, Stella, you need to... <laughs> Costello, you need a vacation. You've got to stop running around with girls. It's affecting your brain. I think you're right, Abby. I know it. Last night, I had a date to pick up a girl at Hollywood and Vine. I drove down to Hollywood and Vine. Then I went to dinner, and all during dinner, I felt as if I'd forgotten something. Then to a movie, and all through the movie, I felt as though I'd forgotten something. Then I drove to Griffith Park, and I started to neck, and I still felt as if I'd forgotten something. Then I went home, and I remembered what I forgot. What was it? I forgot to pick up the girl. Uh oh And each week at this time, the Abbott and Costello Show presents our feature singer, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Hal Winters with Maddie Malnick and his orchestra. Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize that from now on I'll always be true. I went away, but I didn't mean to stay, and I will regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. I went away, but I didn't mean to stay, and I will regret it until my dying day. Brush those tears from your eyes and try to realize that the ache in my heart is for you. Well, Costello, if we're going to do a murder mystery, we'll need a leading lady. Now, how about that blonde actress you're so crazy about? I ain't going with her anymore, Abbott. We had an argument about mustaches. She likes them and I don't. You mean she wanted you to grow a mustache? No, I wanted her to shave, shave hers off. I... <laughs> uh, I thought she was rather pretty. She has such pearly white teeth. Yes, and when we broke up, I asked her for a picture of her face so I could remember her lovely teeth. Well, did she uh, give you the picture? She didn't have a picture, so she gave me the teeth. I... <laughs> 
Well, we've got to have a leading lady. Now, wait a minute. How about that little brunette actress? No, I'm mad at her, too. We had a date at Hollywood and Vine last week, and she stood me up. D- did you tell her off? I'll say I did. I said, how dare you stand me up at Hollywood and Vine? And she said I was, she was sorry, and now we have an understanding. You have? Mm-hmm. Now she's going to stand me up at Sunset and Vine. <laughs> Russell, I think this idea for doing detective stories is, is going to be a flop. You know nothing about detectives. Well, my whole family were detectives, Abbott. My Uncle Tom was smart as a whip, but they threw him off the force. Why? They found out there weren't very many smart whips. I... <laughs> I don't believe that. Why Why did Tom really get thrown off the force? Well, if you must know, he was taking bribes. He used to put the money in his shoes, and the chief found it out. If he put the money in his shoes, how did the chief find out? He got 18 inches taller the first week. I... <laughs> Who else in your family were detectives? Well, my twin uncles, Gus and Billy. They joined the force on the same day. Billy's, uh, Billy's first assignment was to find a gorgeous secretary who had stolen a million dollars from her boss. What was Gus's first assignment? To find Billy. Uh... <laughs> were any of the other Costellas detectives? Yes. Two of my cousins, Bert and Harry. They were working on a case at the racetrack. They had to find a gang that was doping horses. A, a difficult case? Oh, very difficult. Difficult, eh? Yeah, very yeah. difficult. Bert and Harry disguised themselves as a horse and slept in the stables. One night a guy came along and jabbed them full of dope. What did they do? What could they do? They came in third and paid 280. <laughs> well, never mind that. What is your uh, Sam Shovel story for tonight? It's one of my most famous cases. I call it the case of the boy named Tony, whose mother kept him locked in a closet, or Tony's home permanent. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Well, let's get on with the case. And now, we present the adventures of Sam Shovel, Master Detective. Brought to you by Army Surplus Sales. And here is today's radio special. Something no housewife should be without. Yes, today you can buy Fort Dix. So, (laughs) rush over to Army Surplus Sales and buy Fort Dix. Bring it home and surprise the little woman. (laughs) And remember, when you buy, insist on the genuine Fort Dix. Do not accept March Field. (laughs) And now, for the adventures of Sam Shovel, Private Detective. I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting in my little office down by the waterfront all by myself, playing gin rummy the hard way. The hard way. Without cards. (laughs) I've been playing for two hours, and I owe myself $900. And I'm worried. I know I'm not good for it. Being a private detective isn't a bad racket. I remember the first day I opened this detective office. I threw a party. What a party. I bought a carton of beer, and as I was carrying it up the stairs, I tripped. All the bottles were broken. Beer was leaking all over me. Everybody cheered and congratulated me. I had broken my first case. As I'm sitting here now, I feel something creeping up behind me. It's Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicides Bureau. The man who single-handed caught Babyface Nelson, Babyface Cooper, and Babyface Brown, which wasn't too difficult considering they were all babies. (laughs) Detective Abbott speaks. Hello, Sam Shovel. My, it's dark in here. Why don't you pull up the shades? Okay, I will. Sam, it's still dark in here. I know. I don't have any windows. (laughs) Just look at your office. An old herring barrel for a chair, a soapbox for a desk. 
A rug made out of old newspapers. Yes, you may not believe this. Lieutenant, five years ago I started out with nothing. <laughs> look out! Look out! <laughs> look. I scared you! Look. You got another fire. You got another one. Look out! Look out! <laughs> hey, look. Somebody made a bullet hole in the ceiling. <laughs> Just missed killing me. How could a bullet shot at the ceiling hurt you? If I happened to be sitting on a chandelier, I would have been killed. <laughs> Shovel, what made you go into this dangerous business? The prizes. There's prizes in the detective business? Sure. If I'm lucky, I may get to be Ellery Queen for a day. <laughs> Awake? <laughs> what was that? Oh, just the backfire of an automobile. Help! 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 What was that? That must be one of the tires yelling for help. <laughs> that, that sound came from the building next door. Who occupies it? The Universal International Overseas Interstate Trucking Company. Where do they ship to? Glendale. We'd better go next door and investigate. It may be the killer. Where will I get my weapons? My gun, my blackjack, and today's newspaper. Today's, today's newspaper is a weapon? If I miss with the gun and the blackjack, I'll show him the headlines in the paper and he'll worry himself to death. <laughs> Let's go. Help! Help! Hey, look, look. There's a man on the floor. He's in trouble. What happened, mister? Oh... I've been stabbed. They put a bullet in my shoulder, a dagger in my back, and all my ribs are broken. Oh. Does it hurt? Only when I... Does it hurt, mister? Only when I laugh. I... <laughs> Come, man. Tell us who stabbed you. It was... It was... <coughs> this, this man is dead. We've got, to... <laughs> We've got to find out who the killer is. I know. I'll ask Herman the stool pigeon. He'll sell us the information. What makes you so sure he will? For money, Herman would sell his own grandmother. How do you know? I bought her three times already. <laughs> I left Lieutenant Abbott and went looking for Herman the Stool Pigeon. Then made a trip to the Los Angeles waterfront, the toughest part of town. What a tough neighborhood. The only place in Los Angeles where the pedestrians knocked the cars down. <laughs> I was scared. Plenty scared. My throat was so dry I could feel the seeds in my Adam's apple. <laughs> I drew my trusty revolver. I didn't know whether to put it in my holster or in my pocket. Then I decided to check if the gun was loaded. I held it against my head and pulled the trigger. <laughs> Putting the gun in the hole in my head, I started for the docks. <laughs> Suddenly... Suddenly, I heard a voice. Psst, 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 what Sam. are you like that for? Sam. What? It's me, Detective Abbott. It's dark. I can't see you. I'm here on the wharf. On the what? Wharf, wharf, wharf. I can't hear a word you're saying. There's a dog barking someplace. <laughs> I looked up. Waterfront Lil was standing beside me. She was more beautiful than ever. She spoke. Hello, Sam. Hello, Miss Waterfront. <laughs> Call me Lil, you gorgeous hunk of man. Okay, Lil, you gorgeous hunk of man. 
Never mind the romance and Sam. You've got to find out if she's a smuggler. Okay. Be, be subtle. Don't let her know you're after information. Okay. Take it easy. All right. Okay. Lael, are you a smuggler? What? <laughs> I'll tell you if you promise not to turn me over to the police. Now, promise you won't turn me over. Why should I turn you over? You can't look any better on the other side. <laughs> well, Lil, I got you at last. I'm taking you in. Oh, no, you're not. You'll never take me alive. Quick, Sam, put the handcuffs on her. <laughs> she got me. I'm shot. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. Quick, Lieutenant, call an ambulance. We'll take Sam to the hospital. No, no, not the ambulance. Sam, don't, don't, you, don't you want to go to the hospital? Yes, but I ain't riding in no ambulance through that Los Angeles traffic. A man can get killed that way. I'll walk. Oh, quick, get him out of here. Keep the house lights down, boys. We'll have a curtain call by Abbott and Costello after a final reminder on this subject. Costello, you certainly gave a brilliant performance to Sam Shovel tonight. Thank you, Bud Abbott. You're full of pep. Yes, sir, you you certainly were effervescent tonight. Did you ever see me when I effervescent? <laughs> effervescent. Now I know what happened to Baron Munchausen's writers. We've got them! <laughs> Writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman. With Paul Conlon, Pat Costello. And our producer is Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody Good night, in Patterson. Good night. Yeah. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. 